To get the illustration even more clearly, let's look at Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, in the Old Testament, Adam and Eve sinned. And according to the Bible, therefore they became dead in trespass and sins. Seems to me that the best way to understand the Bible is by the Bible. Now, if the moment Adam took the forbidden fruit, someone said, it wasn't the apple on the tree, it was the pear on the ground that got us in trouble. Well, the pear on the ground, Adam and Eve, both partook of the forbidden fruit. In chapter 2 it said, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat thereof, for in the day you eat thereof you shall surely die. Now, when Adam took the forbidden fruit and Eve took it, they died. They were spiritually dead. Now, here's what a spiritual dead person can do. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. They had already taken it, and the Lord God called Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. There were several important things about that. Even though Adam was spiritually dead, he could still hear God. Notice he could still understand. He understood what God was saying. So even in our fallen state, the image of God is still in us. Our ability to hear God is still there. Our ability to respond to God is still there, both positively and negatively, respond in rejecting it or respond in accepting it. In fact, in Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 19, it tells us that unsaved people can understand and perceive the truth of God. Take a look at that in Romans chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth they know it, but they're holding it down. Now notice verse 19. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them since the creation of the world. His invisible attributes are, what are the next two words? Clearly seen. Unsaved people who are dead in trespass and sins can clearly see the truth of God revealed in general revelation. So clear is it that they are, quote, without excuse, verse 20. Without excuse. So whatever the Bible means by dead in sin, it does not mean that they do not perceive the truth. It does not mean that they can't understand what God is saying to them. Adam understood it even though he was dead. Death doesn't mean annihilation, it means separation. Death doesn't mean that the image of God is erased, it means the image of God is effaced. Death doesn't mean, and this is a very important distinction, that they cannot perceive the truth, it means they are unwilling to receive the truth. 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural man, does not receive. It's the Greek word dekomai, which means welcome. Of course there is no welcome in an unsaved heart for the truth of God, but it doesn't mean he doesn't perceive it. He perceives it very clearly, and he's eternally condemned for rejecting it. What he needs to do is to receive it. While he understands it in his mind, he is not willing to believe it in his heart. So that's the first reason why I am not a five-point Calvinist, because one, they get they cart before they horse. You don't get saved in order to believe. You believe in order to get saved. And two, we're not so dead that we can't perceive the truth. We're just so separated from God that we're unwilling to receive the truth. Number two, I'm not a five-point Calvinist because of the you in tulip. T, total depravity, you, unconditional election. Anyone who reads the Bible seriously knows 
that the Bible teaches that God has elected us. Let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 1, for example. In Ephesians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul uh, writes to the church at Ephesus, and he says to them in uh, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. Verse 5, having predestined us according to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Romans 8 says, whom he foreknew, he predestined. First uh, Peter 1, 2, he says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. The Bible says, that even Christ was set aside as the Lamb before the foundation of the world, Revelation 13 and verse 8. That God, by his predeterminate uh, foreknowledge in Acts chapter 2, determined that Christ would die for our sins. Of course, the Bible teaches election. Absolutely, the Bible teaches uh, predestination. But here's the difference between an extreme Calvinist and a more moderate view. The difference between what's traditionally called a five-point Calvinist and what the Bible teaches. The five-point Calvinist says that election is unconditional on God's part. There is no condition for giving it, and there is no condition for receiving it. The moderate view says there is no condition for God giving it. It's given by grace. 